On behalf of the Kenyan government, I'm delighted to join you today in this very important meeting of the Khartoum process to explore legal pathways for talent and skills mobility partnership to match labor market needs. Skills development is key to enhancing access to job opportunities, improved productivity, social cohesion, and the well-being of all the workers. The recognition of the diverse skills that migrant workers possess and the portability of qualifications and skills can facilitate their access to decent works and life, stimulate skills portability between countries of destination and origin, and facilitate the reintegration once they return to their respective countries. Despite the human and financial resources involved, legal labor migration pathways have large potential benefits from meeting skills shortages forced by many cartoon process countries to offsetting the negative impact of aging populations to curbing incentives to migrate irregularly. I think uh, uh, cooperation between uh, countries of origin and countries of destination is uh, absolutely important. It is important in terms of governance, but also in terms of improving opportunities for employment. Each country has their, has their own uh, regulation laws that governing the, the workers. And for us in South Sudan, we are a new country. We don't have enough human resource. Should we allow anybody just to go, we are going to defy our use from labor and, and that's why we have been asking our partners and even our neighbors countries to help South Sudan at least to train and put together all this legal framework for employment. But we are still also flexible, and I think uh, through this discussion, uh, people have to sign bilateral labor agreements. The issue of bravery does uh, exist, but it will only apply in areas where you have scarcity in skill, and which means therefore the, the sending country does not meet its own demand for services locally. Um, you find when you have these uh, partnerships and cooperation between countries, it will be targeted, it will be measured, and there will be definition of quarters, such that if, for instance, you're sending out so many uh, nurses or artisans, that is already uh, something that has been well thought through and um, uh, with clear targets, with clear quarters, and in that respect you find the sending country will not suffer, and at the same time the receiving country will not suffer because it will bring numbers that will meet its need. At the end of the day we benefit from uh, the scale that migrant workers will take uh, to South Sudan, whether foreigners or our people returning back. Uh, to South Sudan. So we really need to work with them and especially our diaspora. So you have a continuous supply but also there's a skill transfer because then the training needs will not just meet the local needs for a country such as Kenya but also upskill and exposed to the peculiar needs of the destination countries. So it, it manages very well the issue of uh, uh, brain drain and you can only do that by way of deepening cooperation and partnership between the sending countries and the receiving countries. The fears are um, different from the perspective of the country of origin. There's always that concern that they, they, they are losing talent. But at the same time, they want to tackle issues such as unemployment. Countries of destination nowadays know very well that uh, demographic challenge is there. Uh, they do need labor in order to be able to uh, sustain their social systems. But again, opening that door is still comes with a lot of risk because uh, they want to be able to have their constituents feeling secured and the issue of social cohesion that comes into question when we are opening doors. And I think projects such as the Bar project are excellent because they create that enabling environment for these two countries to come together and be able to dialogue really where their problems are. How can we mediate and broker those differences and find solutions that work? for everyone in the, in the, um, in the dialogue. So far I heard a lot about theoretical uh, part of, of things and now we're, we're looking more practice, best practice examples. So linking policy options and concrete modalities of cooperation in the area of legal and labor migration. My recommendation is to learn from uh, each other for, and then also see 
what is in the skill profiles of citizens in their country and then in other countries. And then also I think what the market needs, for example, there must be continuous assessment of the needs of the market so that what we train or countries train is what the market needs, not actually that produces redundancy and then uh, creates an employed army. Some of the key issues around labor mobility or in designing labor mobility um, it's really the involvement of the private sector. And this is also where we're giving a lot of attention on involving this actor, which we know is one of the crucial uh, skills actor because it's the, the employer and is also the representative of the labor market. And it's only if this actor is involved in the, the design stage and knows and his interests, concerns and its role are integrated in this project we can then be able really truly to design something that leads to successful uh, results. We have to sell to the companies a completely new pro product and uh, there is mistrust. So you have to build that trust, you have to show good examples. I think what really helped us to kind of break the barriers of this mistrust is when we brought representatives of companies to Nigeria where they could interact with around 100 of uh, Nigerian developers, they also could see them in action. Skills are very important for employment, for uh, productivity and for uh, gainful income generating activities. But uh, if the skills are acquired and not recognized, then the possibility of uh, gaining employment and then also benefiting from the skills will be very much minimal. For this reason, there must be a system that recognizes the skills people have and then uh, certifies them. You see, skills are most of the time national. The people develop skills or countries develop skills according to their national standards. So when it comes to recognizing them across a region or between countries, the systems could differ. Uh, unless there is a framework that would actually harmonize the training programs in terms of even naming and then the amount of uh, time is spent and then coverage the profile of the skills, then it is very difficult to uh, recognize for countries. So that is where regional organizations like ours have to work on having a common uh, framework so that people can easily uh, get their skills recognized because the framework would describe what labels and types and then amount of skills that have, they have acquired or should be covered by training. I think it's very important to be agile, agile and flexible, so that you can respond to the circumstances, so that you are uh, allowed by, I don't know, contracting authority, by the donor, to be flexible and react to what's happening on the ground. And I hope uh, all the participants in this particular forum have not forgotten the question raised by the Honourable, Honourable Minister that in the next meeting we should be looking not just at sharing experiences but also evaluating our performance as cartoon process. What have we done from the founding of this particular forum? Are we making progress? Are we meeting our aspirations and goals? Are we um, on track? So I just want again to thank the Honourable Minister uh, for giving us that guidance. Your Excellencies uh, who have joined us, uh, it is our sincere uh, gratitude that you are able to uh, set time and to join, with, uh, to join us in this particular occasion and to share with us uh, your views and thoughts. We have now reached the end of two very intense days and I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks and gratitude for being here with us, for your active participation and for dedicating your time to this two days meeting. This is a testimony to the importance of the topic and the fact that indeed Cartoon Process partners are committed to deepening the dialogue on labor mobility. <laughs>